Episode 778, Monday afternoon. How are you? You. How's it going, everybody? I am uh, I'm kind of rested up. I got home late Saturday night and uh, from the tour, the last tour of the year. And uh, I want to give a big shout out to my man, Bill Burr and Club Soda Kenny for basically kind of uh, which I realized yesterday I was eating breakfast at this place and a comedian came up to me and he, he's like, how's it been going? And I go, I just got home from the road. And he goes, how long were you out? And I was like, two years. <laughs> and he goes, two years, not two years straight, but it, you know, I've been on the road on and off pretty much for the last two years, starting from the beginning of the Bill Burr tour into the Marcus King tour, back into the Bill Burr tour, into the Delray headlining runs all over to Bill Burr tour again. And um, it's literally been since COVID full throttle. And that's kind of how you got to work. These days, you can't really take any time off when you're at my level because you'll just start to go backwards and people will just walk over your corpse. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so fucking long run. Uh, next road date will be New Year's Eve in Vegas at the Comedy Cellar. But other than that, I'm going to be sleeping in my own bed for a while, which I am not uh, knocking other than money-wise. That's the only scary thing. I think if I had plenty of money, I would just do comedy only. I've said it before at the comedy store or in LA, wherever I'm booked to sleep in my own bed, hang out with Gertie and uh, enjoy life away from the airports. I do love it though. I do love once you get home, it's that old curse. You're home. You're like, I got to get on the road and you're on the road. You're like, I got to get home. But uh Yeah. It was a, a fantastic way to end the long uh, few years, long, great few years, actually. That, pretty much the greatest years of my life. 58 years old, about to be 59. And I would say the last two years was the greatest um, years of my life. Other than my uh, mom passing away, the rest of it, fantastic. Mom passing away, the all-time worst uh, year of my life. And I'm still, I've said it before, I'm still, uh, I'm still harboring that, man. I'm still trying to recover. I don't think you'll ever recover, but I'm out working. I'm alive. I'm healthy. And, uh, yeah, this last week was insane. We did a California run. We did Ojai, Stockton, Modesto, Bakersfield, Fresno, Visalia. These are cities that 99.9% of entertainers do not go to. They'll do San Francisco. They'll do San Jose. They'll do Los Angeles. They'll do Orange County, Anaheim, and they'll do San Diego. And that'll be their California run. But it is uh, amazing to think about when I first started comedy and back when I played music, how many gigs in my career I've played up and down highway 99, which is the other highway that runs next to I five. Most tour buses get on the I five and they burn right by these cities. And uh, I'll tell you what, it is incredible how big California is when you get into all these little cities little towns, whatever you want to call them. So the first stop was in uh, Ojai, which is a beautiful pocket in California, known mostly for uh, rich, rich people and people that want to just hide out and live off the grid and art, art crystal gypsies, art crystal gypsies. <laughs> if you have not been to Ojai, you got to go there. It's, uh, it's amazing. They've got some good food there, and it is just a, a wild part of California. 
and we did this small mini amphitheater. It'd be like if somebody was really rich and said, I want to build a miniature Hollywood bowl in my backyard that held 900. That's what they, uh, that's what they have downtown Ojai. And, uh, it has the seats and then it has the grass area, like all the kind of amphitheaters have. But the grass area was like a dog park during the day. So, and it had no slope. You know, the grass areas usually have a slope and then you can see over the, uh, the seated area. This was just level. So <laughs> it was the most insane uh, seating se uh, section I've ever seen. And, you know, before, during sound check, I was out there sound checking and there was a guy just doing yoga, just full on in like a speedo with nothing else on, just yoga. And then next to him was a dog just fucking blow, blowing it out. Anyway, it was probably one of the funnest shows we've done in a couple years, right up there with that movie theater in Gardenia. Just fantastic. The people came in. The crowd was amazing. A lot of friends came down. Juliette Lewis was there. Uh, Dave Lombardo from Slayer showed up. Who else was there? Uh, it, was, it was Dave Kushner from Velvet Revolver. A lot of cool people came out. It was super cool. <clears throat> Excuse me with that fucking bullshit throat clearing. Anyway, so we did Ojai. It was three. We had to do it three in the afternoon because it gets really cold out there. So you're just telling dick jokes and there's like families walking by and there's a tennis court to the right. And they're like, don't worry, they won't be playing tennis when the show starts. But it's still, it was just fucking wild. Anyway, so we did Ohio, and then we went to Bakersfield at the Fox Theater and uh, Bakersfield, cool as shit. Land of corn. Ba -na 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 -na. Oh, yeah. Shout out to my man Ross Robinson who uh produced that first corn record. I'll never forget it. First time I saw corn, Foundations Forum, Hyatt or Hilton Hotel next to the uh the Van or not Van Nuys, uh, the um Burbank Airport. Went in. Ross is like, you got to see this band. I do the record. It's fucking, they're incredible. And they came on and I was just, I said it before, I was just jealous because they basically had kind of invented a new style of music and they were just up there. And uh, fucking exploded from there on out, man. Wild. But uh, Bakersfield Fox Theater downtown was the, First theater 12 years ago, maybe 11 years ago. First theater I ever did doing comedy. I opened for Jay Moore there. Rode my motorcycle out there to Bakersfield. Did the set, hung out with Jay Moore. And then I had to ride home because I didn't have a hotel or anything. And it was one of the most, you know, hurricane winds of all time up on the grapevine, just riding like, what the fuck? 18 wheelers going by. What the fuck? I never forgot that theater. And uh, to go back and do it again uh, was fantastic. Especially with Bill, man. We were just, we were just having a good time that day. We, uh, we went out and walked around the town. Each city we did. Every morning we'd get up around eight and find the spot to get coffee and the spot to eat. And in this world of the internet and people moving places that are cheaper, it's getting uh, better and better in small pockets of America to be able to find like a healthy meal and a good coffee, a record store, it's like I said, you can live anywhere in America if you just stay on the two block radius where they sell coffee records and a barber shop and uh, a vegan restaurant or whatever. You, you just stay in that pocket and you're good to go. Uh, but you go two blocks off and woo wee, 
Look out. Look out. Anyway, so what did we do? We did uh, Bakersfield, and then we went to was, – was Stockton was next. No, no. Stockton was not next. It was – hold on. I got it right here. Let me look it up because I want to get this, this right because uh... – Okay, here we go, which, uh, by the way, I want to tell you what spot I am. Uh, for the year, I'm at 338 spots for the year. So here's the run. It went Libby Bowl, Ojai. And then Fox Theater, Bakersfield. Oh, then we went to Warner's Theater, Fresno. Now, I spent a lot of time in Fresno growing up because my dad lived there after he left Yosemite. And... uh so I would go there for Christmas or summer. So there's a lot of uh, memories in Fresno. One of them is I bought Back in Black at the Tower Records on Blackstone the day it came out. And uh, I rode a, a bus for two hours from my dad's house, which was only like, five miles away from this tower records, but it was like 79 stops. You know, those fucking bus rides. It's like every two blocks it pulls over. You're like, come on. Anyway, that's one of the memories. I remember, uh, there's a radio station there called KK DJ. And they're like this Tuesday, a new ACDC album is coming out. And you're like, what are you talking about? Bon Scott passed away. This is pre-internet. They didn't, they didn't have anywhere, you know, there wasn't even like rumors or ACDC got a new singer and they're working on a record. There was none of that. It was just all of a sudden, there's a new ACDC record. They've got a new singer. They don't even have the single. You know, now singles are out six months before the fucking record's out. And then a second single, then a third, and then a fourth. By the time the record comes out, you're like, I got it. But yeah, I remember the DJ came on. Yeah, this Tuesday, there's going to be a new ACDC album. That's all we know. And so I rode the bus out there and got it. Got on the bus, riding home, opened it up. There's the picture of Brian. I was like, what the fuck, Brian? That's the new guy. I was telling Bill, I, I, I wish I could go back in time just to be that day. My dad was at work or whatever. You know, I rode the bus. It's fucking like, I don't know how old, 81, wherever. I was in 81, uh, 1980, sorry. 1980, I was a freshman. So I was probably like 12 or 13. Ride the bus all the way out there. Come home, two hours, a four-hour round trip to go five miles. Got home, put it on, dropped the needle. Looking at the picture, the embossed. Is it embossed or embossed? I'm always asking people. Right. Uh, looking at that, the bumpy logo on the black cover. And I've said, you know, I've talked about this before with people, but did the first pressing of back in black, when you slid the sleeve out, it had the band there. Remember the pictures. Let me look at this real quick. Hold on. Back in black, original vinyl. Well, I'm back, back in black, uh, original vinyl. Because this is, I've been talking about this. For some reason, I feel like there was a photo of Bond on the inner sleeve. And then they, okay, here's the pictures. And then it was gone after the first pressing, but I guess I'm totally wrong. You know, because I have yet to ever see that. But I had the first one. I don't have it anymore. I'm looking at an original one right here on YouTube. Those photos, though, remember you opened it up? You saw Brian. He's got his foot up on the wall. He's wearing those destroyed sneakers. I think they're Pumas or something. He's got the hat on. And then that great photo of fucking Angus. It was all back and black, or all black and white. Yeah, this is an original one right here. 
I thought when you turned it over, there was that that famous photo of Bond that I have that he's sitting on the ground and he's having like a drink. Let me see if I can find that. But I just don't see it. I've never seen it. It's just in my fucking mind that was there. Let's see. Bond Scott photo. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to see this, but I'll turn off the backdrop. Bond Scott photo. Here we go. Not Don Scott. <laughs> Don Scott. It'd be such a different guy if it was Don Scott. Hey, I'm Don Scott. Donnie Scott. Don Scott photo. Here we go. <laughs> well, I'm Wikipedia or I'm uh, Googling this. And one of the things says Bon Scott's teeth. <laughs> okay, here we go. Bon Scott pictures. So I always thought that this picture right here was on the other side of the inner sleeve. And I do not know why I think this. If somebody out there is more ACDC than me, not meaning uh, gay, <clears throat> ACDC, remember that one? Like in the 70s, people th said that that meant you were gay. So absurd. Ah, he's uh, ACDC, if you know what I mean. Anyway, um, this photo, where the fuck is the photo? You know, whenever I want to find something on the internet, man, it's just fucking not easy. It's not there, you know? And it's my favorite photo of Bond. I use it at the Bond Scott bashes a lot. And uh, it's just not coming up. And, you know, when I'm done with this podcast, it'll fucking come up immediately let's see here which i'm i'm uh, uh i'm kind of embarrassed how long this is taking to even fucking find it's probably not even going to have the payoff because like i said most people are going to go that wasn't on the inner sleeve and i don't know why i think it was was the first run like i had the first run i got it the first day it came out and while I'm looking for this goddamn fucking photo, I'll finish my story. You drop the needle, comes on. Oh, found it. Okay. This is the photo I thought was on the inside. Oh, motherfucking God. I just hit the wrong goddamn thing. I am such a grandpa. Man, I'm trying to work the internet. I was trying to show a guy a clip of my, um, my special yesterday. And, uh, you know, I was hitting start and it wasn't starting up. And he was grabbing my phone, acting like I didn't know how to work a phone. I'm like, dude, I am fucking master internet. <laughs> I can't, oh, here it is. Okay, so I thought this photo <clears throat> was on the inside. Let's see if you can see it. And I thought it said like, let's see. Come on, there it is. And I thought it said rest in peace. Or, you know, something. I thought this was on the other side of the sleeve. And I do not know why, but that's, I, I, I would almost bet everything on it and would have lost. Because every time I look up a vintage version of Back in Black, it's not there. So I fucking must have dreamed it or something. Anyway, drop the needle, hear uh, Hell's Bells. You hear that? That I wish I could go back in time just to hear and feel that one more time of like, oh, is this good or I don't know. You know, you're just listening and it's just so different. That feeling. And then by the second spin of the record, you're like, you know, you're calling your buddies. Dude. Have you heard have you heard the new singer? No, oh, I got it. I got the album. Have you what's he sound? I don't know. It sounds like I don't know. It's a, it's pretty good. And then a week later, you are fucking hooked. It's kind of like the first time you drink booze. You drink it, you go like, oh man, I don't know about the oh, who likes this. And then a month later, you're just an alcoholic. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so 
Fresno. I spent a lot of time there. My dad lived there and uh, not a lot of time because my dad wasn't around most of the time. But, the you know, the standard bullshit Christmas, uh, summer, uh, summer, couple weeks in the summer, uh, whatever. And um, next to our hotel where we stayed was this arena called the Selland Arena. And that is where... I would go see bands play after they played San Francisco because it was way smaller and you could get you know right up on the band. Like Cow Palace, I'd always be up on the rail, but I was like fucking four foot tall, tall, four foot small. And I'd be on the rail just back then the rail would just crush your ribs and shit. I mean, I can't even believe they get away with that stuff. Like you would just be like smashed into the rail and then go back then the then the fucking audience would move you this way sometimes your feet would be off the ground and then once in a while you're looking down like oh fuck money somebody dropped their money or their fucking band shirt total ground scores there was nothing better than ground scores after a uh, uh a general admission concert they'd be like thank you good night you just start looking on the ground like a fucking just a scavenger but you would find shit like a hundred dollar bill or or fucking you know badass uh levi vest shit all over the ground people are going through the shit trying to find their car keys and stuff it's like a it's like a goddamn war down in there back in those days fireworks would be coming by your head bottle rockets and people throw m80s in there it was straight Vietnam. You'd be like, oh, what the fuck? Weed smoke, Colombian weed. And then the, all the security guys on the front, like, get out, look out. It was, it was fucking, it was on. I mean, those front row rail riders, like myself and my buddy Wetton Camp, I didn't go, nobody went to as many concerts as me and Eric went in camp, man, we saw fucking everyone. Bill was like, dude, you saw everyone. I've, I literally saw everybody but Zeppelin and Skinner. Everybody. Fucking $10. Let's fucking go. How are we getting there? I don't care. My Toyota Tercel, the bus, the Golden Gate Transit, BART, a fucking hitchhike, get picked up by some weirdo asking if you ever used anal beads before. That happened. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, selling arenas, right? I open my blinds and I see it selling arena and it fucking hits me like a ton of lead. Second time I've been in this hotel. Second time I thought about the selling arena, but this time I really got sentimental because I was like, fuck, it's right there. I called my buddy. Capitan, Mark Capitan. He made a call and got Bill and I into the fucking arena during the day. I walked through those doors again and I knew exactly where the fucking stage was. I remember the look of the inside. And well, here's what's weird. I go, whoa, this place looks way fucking bigger than I remember it. I didn't find out till later that night that they added a third deck like 20 years ago. So it is way bigger now. It was like 7,500 uh, seats. Now, if you go and you YouTube Van Halen Selland Arena or ACDC Warner Theater, ACDC played the Warner's Theater 1979 Highway to Hell Tour. That's where Bill and I played a couple nights ago, the Warner's Theater. And the Selland is where I saw Van Halen June 18th, uh, 81 on the fair warning tour and i also saw cheap trick there about six months before on the all shook up tour they opened with can't stop the music well i can't stop the music great album underrated cheap trick record and van halen absolutely melted faces opening with on fire unbelievable i remember specifically one of the greatest things I've ever seen in concert timing wise, it wasn't any lasers. It wasn't any fucking 
fire. It wasn't any kind of, uh, you know, lighting. It was Van Halen opening with on fire. And right, you know how it starts, right when the fucking lights went on, Dave was perfectly airborne off the riser, splits, lands on the ground, and starts singing on fire. It was perfect timing. He had to work on that for two, three months for that timing with the lighting guy. Like, you didn't get the lighting right. It was on, I mean, you know, they come on, and then he's airborne, and the lights come on, and he's just flying. Fucking crazy. I don't think there was any better than Van Halen on the Fair Warning Tour other than ACDC. ACDC, to me, always smoked Van Halen live because they came with the no fuck around, smash your face with 120 dB. And Van Halen, after the Fair Warning Tour, became goofy and silly. You know, like we were talking about, look at all those people here tonight. Look at all the people here tonight. I'm going to fuck your girlfriend, man. But Fair Warning and Women and Children Tour were absolute crushers. Anyway, so Fresno, we did Fresno. And then where did we go? Modesto. And uh, I got to tell you, man, it was one of the fucking funnest tours ever. Because you do a venue, then you sleep, and you wake up in the morning, you get in the fucking SUV, and you drive like 40 minutes, and you're in another hotel, and you're ready for the next fucking theater. We're doing all the classic Fox theaters up the 99. Highway 99 is the unknown highway that takes you through all the picker towns where, you know, the, the food has grown, the fruit, the apricots, the apples, the uh, the fucking uh, almonds, all of that shit. And, it, you know, it's you're just going up the 99 to the forgotten land of California. And uh, so we went to, uh, oh, by the way, I wanted to shout out what piece of shits these SUVs are. These, these Fords and these Chevys, these big, big, long um, SUVs. What are they called? Like the big fuckers. Every time I get in them, I'm usually riding in the back seat and I had Gertie with me. The back seat of these new, new SUVs, they are rattle cans, man. They have like shit shocks and they fucking are loud. I can already not hear, but Bill would be talking and I, I couldn't, uh, huh? What? Huh? Because you're back there and it's just like... <laughs> and gertie was just fucking not having it she was like i need to sit in your lap this thing needs some fucking shocks these new suvs i've been in them for the last three years and all of them are just fucking uncomfortable just uh, you know spine jogglers noisy it is weird the cabin sounds the cabin noise Rate the cabin noise, but it is weird how bad they are for what kind of technology we have and how fucking great cars are now. It's fucking wild. Anyway, the next stop was uh, State Theater Modesto. Now, this was a movie theater that held 500, and it was definitely the smallest venue that I've done with Bill in five years easily. Easily the smallest venue. Those fuckers got the up close kick ass show. And the other venues are only 1800 to 2200. So they're all small for bill. And, uh, and I realized to me, I love the, the arenas. I fucking love them. And I love the clubs, but the ultimate sweet spot, if you could do it the rest of your career would just be 2000 seat, um, theaters. The people are just right there. The theaters are ornate. The sound is amazing. One thing, though, about them, they always have, like, crazy fucking stairs up to the green room. And I was thinking, one of them, a couple nights ago, the stairs were, like, straight down, and there was no railing. I'm like, how many bands over the years 
just ate shit down one of these. I can't even believe it's even legal. Like OSHA doesn't come in and go, sorry, can't use the uh, backstage anymore. Those stairs are uh, not OSHA approved. I mean, these fuckers were straight down. You, you take one wrong step and you are rolling down some serious fucking concrete skull crushing stairs. They are fucking gnarly. These old Fox theaters with their stairs. Anyway, so we did the, uh, the uh, state theater, which was really cool in Modesto. And then we got up in the morning and we went to this place called Lucille's. I found it on, uh, on uh, Google search, best breakfast or best coffee in Modesto. And we went to Lucille's and this couple had opened up. It maybe held 10 people, small little cafe. And the food and the coffee were fucking amazing. And uh, it was right around all these bail bonds fucking joints. And I said, how long have you been open? She goes, two years. It was, a, it was an old uh, bail bonds place before that. And then it was empty for seven years. And there's like five bail bonds all next to each other. I was wondering... Why, why so many bail bonds? Like, is there a competition? Like, do they go like, Hey, we do better bails over here. What? I, I don't know what the fuck it was, but there's always like, you know, you're in the bad part of town when it's just, it's a uh, bail bonds. And, uh, and then there's tattoo shops always, right? Like you, you, you get out, you get a, you get bailed out and you're like, dude, I had to get some tattoos while I was there here. Cover them up, cover these up. <laughs> Cover up this old fucking uh, praying hands. You know, those people that get the praying hands. Oh, <laughs> anyway, Lucille's. Oh, fucking great. God damn, it was good. Then the next stop was Stockton. There used to be a rock club out there when I was, uh, when I was young called Stockton Rocks. And, um, you know, uh, it's not there anymore, obviously, but Stockton land of the band pavement and Chris Isaac. And when you're there, you think about pavement and that nineties music, you know, shoegazer slash slacker rock. Remember they used to call that slacker rock. It'd be like uh, Beck pavement um, replacements, that jangly kind of slacker slacker rock. Hey man, what kind of music you play? Slacker rock. Slack rock. <laughs> Remember that that Flintstones? What was his name? Sludge rock or whatever. That's fucking hilarious. Slacker rock. Shoegazer. Shoegaze. Uh, somebody told me shoegaze is back. Anyway, shoegaze. Pavement. Out of Stockton, California. One of the greatest indie bands of all time. Fucking unreal, man. You go put on some pavement right now, and it is the definition of uh, 90s. I mean, the definition of fucking 90s pavement. And they're from St uh, Stockton. It's fucking wild. And they also, I think, had the original diss track way before hip-hop. They dissed Stone Temple Pilots and fucking... Um, and uh, oh, Smashing Pumpkins in one song. Uh, what was it called? On the Range? The Range? Oh, they just fucking trashed those two. And Billy Corgan got all furious. I'm, I'm not doing Lollapalooza there on. I kind of I kind of like that he trashed Smashing Pumpkins, man. I never was a Pumpkins guy. Still am not. Catchy songs, great songs. Would have loved to hear another band play them. Get back from the range. I'm still with the red in the cage. Man, anyone could sound like Billy Cork. Get back from the range. Pavement. Fucking great. While I was there, I was listening to Pavement and uh, Chris Isaac. Chris Isaac, fucking great. That uh, Wicked Game record. So fucking good, man. There was a time where Chris Isaac was the king 
of San Francisco, man. Him and Kenny, the drummer, Kenny. They're still out. Kenny's still in the band. They're still out doing it. I remember Chris Isaac, he'd just be out there surfing. Uh, he lived deep in the avenues. I lived on 10th Avenue. He lived like, I don't know, fucking 44th out deep in the sunset. And he would just uh, surf ocean beach and shit. Longboard. Chris Isaac. Both from there. But man, can you feel pavement when you're in Stockton? You can fucking feel pavement. What a, uh, what a great venue too. What, let me see Stockton. Uh, that was the Friday night. It was good. The best night other than Ojai, the best night was Saturday night at Visalia. Uh, we did the Fox there and I will tell you this. You could have shot nine specials in there back to back each cup because the audience was fucking fire the dynamics man you bring it down you tell a story they're listening and then bam they just laugh it was incredible then as soon as we were done with visalia we're three and a half hours out from um la we get in the car the bumpy suv bill just hands me some uh mushrooms we grime them down and we just get ready for the ride <laughs> i remember at one point you know the mushrooms when they come on if you've never taken mushrooms you know when they're coming on you start to yawn first you get this weird tingle in the back of your mouth it's like a tingle you're like it's floaty and you go here they come they're coming on and you're not quite sure are they going to go to four five or ten but you know they're starting to come on and I remember Bill said something and I started fucking laughing like full on. Ah, 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 and I knew, I knew they were on, you know, I'm like, Oh shit, man. I can't, I couldn't stop laughing. It was something. And he's like, how you feeling? I go, Oh, these are fucking clean. These are good. They were really good. We just laughed all the way home and, told stories bill would be like what else you got and i'd tell him a story and it was it was a beautiful fucking way to end the uh tour i got home i was still kind of tripping a little bit on my bed just sitting there and taking it all in and and then i just sat there and thought about like fuck man that's it right there i'm gonna see bill you know these guys are my best friends you know, they are Ken, Bill and Kenny. They're, they're fucking my family. I, you know, I don't have anybody left. I've truly traveled the United States and Canada with these guys and had some of the greatest times of my fucking life. And they, then you're just thinking about it. You're going, fuck man. That's it. You know, Bill's going to go to New York and he's going to rehearse for Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and he's going to do Broadway for three months. And, and he won't be out on tour, you know, Broadway till July. And then he won't be out on tour. And there's never, ever any guarantee that I'm going out again with him or whatever. Um, and I told this to Bill. He was like, you know what, man, your special is going to come out. You're going to start fucking headlining and killing it. And that's all good. And I would enjoy that and the success of that. I would love to do this run we just did as a headliner in these theaters and and uh, but there's a thing about doing comedy, doing art and traveling with your best friends. There's something about that that's way, way cooler than being super successful, famous, big, big, I'm big comic now, man. Nothing, nothing beats traveling with your 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 best friends. And, and taking in these memories, you know, I remember somebody once told me when I started comedy, they go, enjoy every year of this, because once you make it, you're not going back, you know, it's, you're going to look back on that open mic and go into the fucking 101 diner at two in the morning and talking about the bombing and the killing, uh, you know your first road dates, your first theater date, your first fucking, uh, you know, 
New York date or whatever. You're just looking back on all those years, which by the way, what is this? Let me look right now. I want to give you a heads up on this. Wednesday, the 27th, will be my anniversary of being a paid regular at the comedy store. Twelve what is that 12 years ago? 12 fucking years ago, I became a paid regular at the comedy store. So, you know, those are the kind of things you look back on. And uh, so, you know, even if I was, even if I got, you know, super successful, let's say another couple levels up, I would still want to go out and tour with Bill because he's kind of like this incredible friend you know, midlife or three quarters in life. People at 58 calling shit midlife. <laughs> That's like midlife. Are you saying you're going to live to be 116? That is not fucking midlife, my friends. You're three quarters life. Three quarters life. And pray you get to 80. Pray you fucking, man, you, to say you're in your 50s. I'm in my, you know. I'm midlife right now. Midlife crisis. It's like your midlife crisis now happens when you're fucking 39. That's when the midlife crisis comes. Because that would be midlife now. If you look at the goddamn odds and the, and the facts and the, um, you know, the, uh, the statistics, 39 is midlife. <laughs> fucking... 58, here I am in my, you know, midlife right now. It's like, fuck you. Anyway, uh, you know, it's it was it was an incredible run. And man, it made me even love California more. You know, uh, you get out there, and you're like, this is fucking California is fucking wild. Fuck you, California, Libertar, fuck, fuck that place. It's going to crack off from the earthquake and drift into the ocean. Better swim, better swim, better swim. I'm telling you, man, you go out, you get a car, and you drive around California. You know, people, oh, man, you've been to Europe. Fuck you. Get fly into San Diego, rent a car, and drive from San Diego up to the Redwoods. On your way, stop at the beaches. Cut over, go over to Joshua Tree, hit some Palm Springs, drop down the, the 10, come on into LA, go check out Malibu, go to Griffith Park, go up into Pasadena, then cut over the vine, hit some fucking Ojai, cross back over, do a little Bakersfield, then cross back over, take the one up. It's closed right now because of the mudslides. Go down, hit Big Sur, hit Santa Cruz, go into San Francisco, go up to Lake Tahoe, cut back over, hit some Yosemite, drop back down, go up to the Redwoods. Oh, my God, dude. I'm telling you, it's some of the most beautiful shit you've ever seen. Lake Tahoe. It is unreal. The Russian River. I, everywhere I go in California, I've been everywhere in California. I've gigged everywhere. I've been all over it. And every time I go, I pull in, I go, oh, fuck, I remember this. Stockton. You pull into Stockton, you just go, fucking American graffiti. One of the greatest teen, you know, counterculture films ever made. Fucking Ron Howard, George Lucas. Wolfman Jack, that one dude with the yellow car, which, by the way, somebody uh, told me that they kind of uh, they kind of manage that guy. I think he's still alive, and they said he lives in, like, a small apartment in the valley. And he just, you know, when he can, he goes out and does uh, autograph sessions. I think he's – I think he might be not feeling that well. Let's look that guy's name up. Um. That guy, how cool was that guy in American Graffiti? He had that fucking rolled up white t-shirt and that yellow car. Let's see here. American Graffiti. That is a fuck. It's part of it filmed in Petaluma, of course. 
but Stockton. They got an American Graffiti Museum there. We skipped it because it didn't seem like it was a true American Graffiti um, museum. It seemed, it seemed more like a car museum, and they called it Graffiti. Uh, American Graffiti. Sorry, I'm fucking... Here we go. 1973. Man, have you seen this film? American Graffiti? Coming of age comedy drama filmed by George Lucas. George Lucas, fuck, but these fucking guys were making masterpieces when they were like 20. George Lucas, produced by Francis Ford Coppola. Come on. Richard Dreyfus, unbelievable. Ron Howard. Uh, Mackenzie Phillips. Wolfman Jack, Harrison Ford. Oh my God, he is cool. What was that? Uh, filmed in, oh, it's filmed in Modesto, California. I thought it was filmed in Stockton. Same thing. Kind of, you know, they're they're close to each other. Well, let's see what that guy's name was, man. Paul Lamont. Um, yeah, Paul Lamont. Let's see here. Uh, he did some films, films out, Melvin and Howard. Oh, Bill just watched that. Um, cult film Puppet Master. Remember that? Let me see a fucking photo of this guy. Where's the photos? God, I hate when they don't have photos. Anyway, uh, American Graffiti. I highly recommend it. Which, by the way, Bill and I got deep into some um, movie talk because he's got the Criterion channel and he's watching all the Coen Brothers films and one of my favorites, which is weird for Coen Brothers, was called A Serious Man. And it, yeah, that's him, Paul Lamont. Paul Lamont. He's 79, still alive. Yeah, there he is. What a, I mean, his look. Everybody wanted to be that guy. The t shirt rolled up, cigarette. What are you looking for, sweetheart? Get in. I ain't fucking babysitting no more. Anyway, um, uh, he's he's watching the Criteria Channel, showing all the Coen Brothers films, and uh, I told him Serious Man. The reason I like Serious Man is it is the Coen Brothers kind of doing David Lynch. It's got a lot of Lynchisms in there, a lot of Lynch style and shit, and it's really different for uh, the Coen Brothers. Anyway, speaking of cars, too, fucking. Jay Leno, God damn, this guy's got like nine lives. He's doing a gig at a hotel or somewhere, and he fucking fell down the side of a, a mountain. He was trying to take a shortcut and fell 60 feet. It's fucking fake. God damn, Jay Leno. Guy is a soldier. He went on the, he went on stage. Like, like when I got ran over on the motorcycle, just up there. Uh, he went on stage after falling 60 feet down. His whole face was purple. He had a patch on his eye. God, Jay. Jay, he's not going to slow down. I love it, man. Jay is the guy you look at as like, there he is, man. He loves fucking comedy. The guy's a gazillionaire. He doesn't need to go on the road at all. But he's out doing comedy. He fucking loves it. And I'm glad he's okay. Oh, my God. Jay Leno. Fuck. Um, okay. Couple of uh, things. Uh... I want to get into, I want to give a shout out to Zane O'Loughlin, Patreoner. Zane O'Loughlin. Thank you. Ken Bro. Ken Bro became a Patreoner. Thank you so much. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. And um, bonus episodes galore. Speaking of that selling arena and Van Halen, I'm a uh, Five chapters in on the Alex Van Halen audiobook. And I'll tell you this right now Alex Van Halen, they should have let this guy talk more uh, throughout the career. I know it was Eddie and, and Dave, and Dave was like the front man, you know, but they might have gone even further if they let Alex talk because this fucker's smart and he's, uh, he did just the way he tells stories and everything. It's fantastic. He's not putting on a character and you know, I'm five chapters in and this thing is fucking good. It is wild to hear how they just started drinking at like six years old. 
And the way he just says, like, that's what you did in Europe, man. You just drank, drank and smoked. Your dad gave it to you. And uh, it, it's a dark. I'm, I'm five uh, chapters in. It's pretty dark. Pretty fucking dark, man. Alex's mom would tell him to beat up the dad. It, it's, it's, it's some fucking crazy shit. And uh, I'm digging it. If you haven't, you know, fired it up, go to Audible and uh, sign up for 30 days, uh, you know, free trial, and then just cancel after you're done. <laughs> Who's not doing that? Who are these people that are not canceling after, you know, burn through the book and, uh, and you're good. But fuck, I love it. I put it on when, it, like, when we're on the road trip and just listen to Alex. Really fucking, I mean, you know, this is a man who never, ever, ever said anything. And he is telling you the story of him and Eddie from day one when they meet. <laughs> They're brothers. It's really good, man. It's really fucking good. He would be a dream guest to be on. It's funny, Sammy, Sammy is, uh, you know, he's not mentioned and you could tell he's bitter and he's like, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to fix this. I got to fix this between Alex and I. And, and then Sammy just fucking throws him out of the best. He's all, I can see why he's depressed. He's walking with a cane. He obviously can't play anymore. That's why he's not calling me. I was like, oh, dude, why are you? You don't know that. Maybe he just had hip surgery. You're just, he doesn't, he can't play anymore. I'm worried about his health. He's got a cane. I don't know, man. It is fucking, the older people get, the crazier they get. I'm looking forward to living a long life. Just where I want to get into my crazy era. I mean, I'm crazy now, but you know what I mean? Just be on the podcast like, ah, blah, 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 blah. just old, fucking old. Anyway, uh, I'm digging this Alex Van Halen book. It is out right now. And um, what else? Oh, I forgot to tell you, we were staying in Stockton and every fucking hour there's a train going by our hotel. Just like how many fucking trains are going through California? It was literally like every hour, a fucking train full tilt. Um, I want to give a shout out to a new band. That was turned on to me by uh, a friend of mine, a comedian, and uh, Jason Galern. He shot over a band to me. And, you know, Jason and I, we we tend to have some similar music tastes. So right away I dove into it. It's The band is called Color Green. Okay. And uh, let me get the album up here. Color Green. And, and, and man, this is like... Um, a new mother hips for me. They have definitely some heavy mother hips. Um, fucking influence. There's no way they're not influenced by the mother hips. If they're not, I can't wait to hear where they, where they get their sound from. Cause they really have a hips vibe and uh, the record's called fool's parade. Okay. It came out July 12th, 24th. They're an LA band, which is even fucking cooler. The album cover is beautiful. And there is a song on here. Listen to Kick the Bucket. I started from the top, but uh, uh, this song, Kick the Bucket, absolutely. The whole record blew my mind. But this song I listened to probably 20 times. And they're going to be on the podcast in January. Uh, they're out on tour right now around America. They played New York a couple nights ago. And I'm looking forward to seeing this band. I can't wait. And uh, I think you guys will love them if you, you know, I, I know a lot of you like the same music I like. So check it out. They're on New West Records. And I can't wait to talk to them because I want to know, you know, where they started. They started in L.A., but how did it happen? How do you get a record deal? All of that. And, um, you know, it's it, it's just a great band. Right up there with that band I love, Geese. So I got a couple new favorite bands in 2024. Geese and Color Green. 
and, and, and fuck, man. It just never know when new shit's going to knock you the fuck out, man. It's really, really cool. Uh, San Francisco, punchline, February, I think, 26, 27, 28, March 1st. I will be headlining at the punchline, working on new material. It's weird. It's, uh, it, you haven't even, people haven't seen my special yet, but I'm trying to, uh, work on new material because for the last couple of years, I've been touring around doing basically a lot of the stuff, uh, in the venues. And then people come back and see me again. And I'm like, fuck, these people saw me. And that's the curse of only, you don't have an agent. So you're doing the venues that book you. So it's even more pressure. Like, well, I haven't been to the punchline in two years, but I've done a bunch of San Francisco headline. I did the chapel. I did Alameda. I did San Jose. So, I'm I'm fucking buckling down to get new material. And I'm going to be in Vegas New Year's Eve uh, from New Year's Eve for the next seven nights after that. So like December 31st all the way to the Sunday, I'll be at the Comedy Cellar. And I'm just really working on new stuff. It's funny because I'm out on this theater tour with Bill and Bill's working new stuff. And I would get out there and I, I would, the new stuff would kill one night and just eat it the next night. Bill was laughing. I had this new joke about riding my motorcycle and a crop duster fucking flew over and he pulled the thing too soon over the fields. And he just, I was just coated in fucking roundup or whatever the poison was. He was going to shoot onto the strawberry patch. And I did it the first night and people were dying. I was describing it just, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be dead in two years for sure now. And people are dying and, you know, I'm doing the act out. Then the next night I do it and Bill and Kenny are like, oh, he's just eating it right now. <laughs> and, they, and Bill knows, you know, and I know I'm like, this ain't working at all. So it is, it is the fucking, I'm at the, I'm at the bottom of the hill again. And I'm working my way, you know, one joke at a time back up. And it, it takes fucking a lot of work. You know, that special I shot, I love it so much. And then I'm looking at it like, God damn, I got, I'm fucking, I'm starting all over again, you know? And uh, it, it is fucking work. Some of the stuff is killing and some of the stuff is just fucking medium. And you you got to fucking not find yourself ditching it and going, I'll just do this old shit and kill. Because, you know, there is something interesting about watching someone just work shit. And uh, some of it working good and some not. Like, it's fun to do in 20-minute chunks. But for an hour, people are at the punchline and they're watching me and I'm just breaking out notes hey here's something uh something uh, they go like uh, uh, you know like you can just feel them you can only get away with uh this so many times you can go like well that didn't work and then the people laugh ah that ain't a dick ah but by the third one they're like dude do you got anything good like you use you you don't want to be like that band. you used to be good man your first record first record was great Fucking all your follow-ups suck. You're a one record, one record band. You know, uh, and I've always said comedians, it's opposite of bands. Bands put out their best shit the first, second record. Comedians, you hope, get better and better and better as the years go because they figure out how to do comedy. They've lived a life and they just can eventually find their voice and everything they say it seems funny because they're like, this fucking guy has a, uh, a, a voice and a, a thought, a thread and people fall in love with your, you know, your, your mind. And they're like, this shit is hilarious. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now. And, uh, I think that's where a lot of the week will tap out. They just quit. They'll just be like a fuck. This is too much. I'm out. And, uh, I think that's where you you know, you go wrong. You do all the work and you get there and then you stop working. So I'm not doing that, man. So come out, watch me eat some dicks. Eat a dick, dude. 
which by the way, we, we were, Bill and I were looking up, uh, tripping balls, you know, when you're on mushrooms, people are, I was tripping balls. There's so many ball statements back then, you know, um, it was tripping balls, uh, balls deep balls to the wall. Um, fucking, uh, you know, those are like the ball statement. What else is there? There's tripping balls, balls deep, balls to the wall. Um, I don't know, but we're 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 high on the mushroom, so we're Wikipedia in it. Where'd that come from? How come it's not tripping tripping dick? You don't trip over your balls. If you had a big old dick, you'd trip over it, man. You just fucking it catches you your third leg. Got that donk dick. <laughs> tripping dick. I'm tripping dick up here, dude. <laughs> I love you guys. Keep the candles lit. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bring up some uh bring up some uh you know uh, uh politics at election. I mean at Thanksgiving. Bring up the election at Thanksgiving. See how good that goes for you. Bring up the politics. Couple couple shots of fucking bourbon. And a, a slice of pe uh, pineapple pie, pumpkin pie, <laughs> and then go, well, you know what I think? And just watch what happens. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. Hope to see you out there. Have a great Thanksgiving. Keep the candles lit. And uh, see ya.